So a few things to cover. The program that I used to record me and Alyssa talk, it did not record our faces. So this is going to be um, an audio only podcast episode. If you're listening to it, it does not change anything for you. So anyway, enjoy the episode. Hi, hi. Um, I've been away for months, two months to be exact. I was tired, okay? It's too much research for this thing. You know, I can't just, you know, do things randomly like some people do with podcasts, you know? So um, I need to take a break. But today I'm here with Elisa. Hi. I said it such like such a weird way as if I, you know, like... For some reason, most of my coworkers call me Elisa. I don't know where it comes from. And I've corrected people. Alyssa. It's so similar, it doesn't even, like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they, how would that even be spelled? E-E. That's weird. Because it's a Y. So, you know, I don't know. Well, okay. I'm in not... any case. Yeah, she's a full on Monet. It's like a painting, see? From far away, it's okay, but up close, it's a big old mess. Today, we're going to be talking about the gross, the gory, well, the grotesque, <laughs> which is weird because when I was doing my research, it turns out that grotesque is usually used to describe like uh, very intricate uh, paintings and like patterns. Oh, really detailed. Oh, wait, what do you mean? Like, intricate patterns. let me, so like grotesque, um, it says... Since at least the 18th century, grotesque um, has come to be used as a general adjective for this strange, mysterious, magnificent, fantastic, hideous, ugly, incongruous, unpleasant, or disgusting, and thus is often used to describe weird shapes and distorted forms such as Halloween masks. In art, performance, and literature, however, grotesque may also refer to something that simultaneously invokes um, in an audience, a feeling of uncomfortable bizarreness, as well as sympathetic pity. Basically, yeah, they just covered it, everything. Exactly. <laughs> when I on was the emotion it, spectrum. Anything can go into grotesque, pretty much. I thought it was just the gross and the gory. Yeah. Which I think it still is. I think you can still minimize it, but I don't think we have a good definition of what grotesque is today. I don't think so either. Yeah. I think it's kind of like, depends on like what context you use it in. Yeah, I guess. But what we're focusing more on, I guess, is gross or disturbing art and if it's even worth it. Like, is it is there a point in it? Should we be doing this shit I mean, in general? My, my understanding of the start of grotesque is that mm -hmm. it was... There are a couple artists that people mainly talk about for grotesque. And it's oh, all... I know. Hieronymus Boss. Hieronymus... Yeah, her... her What's his name? Hieronymus Bosch. Hieronymus Boss. <laughs> it's it's a, apparently it's Boss and not Bosch. I looked it up about uh, like the way that it's pronounced in his like original language or whatever. It's and Boss. you know why? Because I've made a podcast about his painting. Really? He's yeah. the guy who does the really really detailed ones, right? With the yeah, it's like massive, and they yeah. well yeah. massive relatively speaking, because it's not as massive as some paintings are, because you know, but it is quite big, and it was made for like churches. And back then, it was kind of like a release of a new show on Netflix, basically, because they would oh, open it up God. as, like, entertainment for people. And then you could look at all the details and, like, yeah. everything is so interesting. And it's m weird. It's That shit weird. is weird. It's I literally made a whole always, podcast talking about one. <laughs> it always veers into the sexual, too, in, like, a really, like, strange way. Yeah, some people were saying that he was kind of, especially, like, Hieronymus himself was, like, kind of, one of those people that he was kind of condemning a lot of um, sexual behavior, so that was the reason why he would be showing it. Because okay, like on that page, do you huh? do you think from what you read, do you think he's critiquing religion or he's critiquing the sins against religion? Listen, you know that's I mean? the thing. That's the thing. Because based on like what we know about him, because he was like what 16th century, no, 16th century, 15? the end of 16th century, and the beginning of 17th. Okay, correction. It was actually 1450 to 1516, so... <laughs> so, mm -hmm. the records of him are muddy as shit. It's a little bit, like, people don't quite know where he was born, which year. They kind of know 
a couple of years that he was kind of maybe born yeah. in. And then um, they kind of are muddy about like where he died and stuff like that. So they know some information about his life, but they there's so much speculation. Yeah, it was really strange because people kept on talking about him in terms of like him painting for the church, like he was commissioned by the church, right? And then at the same time, some people were speculating that he was part of this weird cult. <laughs> but then someone said that's that like, that's complete bullshit. That. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing is like there's so many theories and some people are like that's complete bullshit. But then you talk to somebody else or you listen to somebody else and they're like, no, that other version of his life is completely bullshit so basically it's hard to tell but i have his, a feeling his own life and the history we know is subjective according yes. to what people think yeah. yeah i believe there was some kind of like misogyny bullshit involved so i was like ah he probably was just like condemning that's sins likely. <laughs> lightly that's likely uh, likely i was like lightly i was like did you have some tea <laughs> specifically <laughs> that painting that i talked about it was in um it was referenced in a K-pop music video of a group that I really like, they How basically they made it? they made a whole music video of like referencing different little parts of that oh, big fun. painting. Yeah, that's and it, it was like one of them was representing like the devil, mm. um, and an owl because owls were like bad omen back in the day, and they were considered to be um, not only bad omen but like basically instead of wisdom. Because we associated them with wisdom or like the symbol of um, wisdom now is an owl, right? But back then it was like a very, it had a really bad rep basically, which I agree with because owls can go fuck themselves. <laughs> you don't like owls. Every time I make a podcast and I like mention owls, I like go on a whole tangent being like, owls are motherfuckers, I hate them so much. You know why? You know why? First of all, I first of all, that you didn't like owls. That's crazy. The thing is, I was fine with them until I got cancer. Okay, and the cells of my specific subtype of cancer oh, yeah, are called owl owl cells because their face looks like an owl, and it does. <laughs> That's creepy. What's the Recently, I saw an owl, animal. a really big one. It's like your demon animal. An animal. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's creepy. <laughs> I fucking hate them. And I saw it in the park like two days ago. Really? It, it was just sitting with its back towards me. And the thing is like, Hoppa was walking and then she heard it make its noise. I don't know what to call that. Hooting? Yeah, <laughs> hooting. <laughs> that sounds funny. But, um, yes. so, <laughs> so it was hooting. So Hoppa stopped and she was like, what the fuck? You know, like she, she, she saw it. And I was like, what are, what are you looking at? So I turned around and then... The goddamn owl turns his head around like a little bitch without turning his body. And I was like, <gasps> okay, that is demonic. That's so I was like, ooh. Also, I've bitch. never seen a, I've never seen an owl hoot. Yeah. I don't know how many owls I've seen that were not in the zoo. Not that many. But I've never seen an owl hoot or hear heard one. I've never seen owls before I moved to Vancouver and in my like really? this this one park. This one park is the only place where I saw owls in hey. real life oh that's so strange so i moved back to calgary and i've been here for like two weeks and there are so many crows and magpies here there's oh. so many crows and magpies and bunnies you you got stuck oh <gasps> you got stuck too okay wait one sec uh oh hello okay we're recording again i go i hope that the other part Saved? I don't know how this program works, but it's saved. Hieronymus Bosch. Boss. Mm -hmm. There's so many strawberries in that painting. Strawberries? Yeah, it's and called um, too. the Garden of something. Delights, of earthly delights. That's what it is. Oh, I guess strawberries are like red and sensual and juicy. Yeah, no. juicy. <laughs> it's like, I mean. apparently it's like kind of like indulgent, indulgent and kind of, and it also yeah. meant something sexual back in the day as well. Um, hmm. So there's a lot of strawberries in that, and also in that music video with Red Velvet, they also have a bunch of strawberries that they eat. That's so funny. They really did it. Well, I know. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> my girlies, my creepy little girlies. Um, <laughs> they make like kind of slightly. I wouldn't say it's grotesque per se because it's just slightly creepy. 
type of thing in their music, not in their music, in their music videos. Um, right. And I mean, maybe that's maybe that's even why it's so hard to pin down what grotesque is, because there's so many different versions of what people see as like scary or freaky or creepy or gross or, you know. That's the thing. I like I like, like wonder. I wonder if I don't know, sometimes I watch things and I'm like, it doesn't really like, bother me. And I think that it, they're kind of cool. Like, for example, <clears throat> in music videos, especially when it's um, exploration of like feminine types of horror. Um, right. But I do right. find um, gore to be annoying <laughs> for some reason. Mm. Um, because most of the time, I feel like most statements can be made in other ways. And yeah. you could make it through juxtaposition of things without and, like deforming the body. Yeah, without like basically resorting to like extreme violence that you present in like movies, for example, right? So I, I kind of looked up a bunch of information about why do people like the grotesque, the gore, right? Because there's a lot of theories about why people like horror. There's a lot of explanation to that. Uh, or, or like why people like thrillers or like why they like exploring that kind of stuff. But there's also a lot of people this subgenre of gore specifically. Psychologists say that that's kind of a bit of a separate thing than just like horror overall i guess there's maybe there's some kind of limits i don't i don't really know how to define them right because why would you enjoy senseless violence right yeah and i can't uh, i can't really understand to me gore feels like cheap uh, yeah cheap horror right yeah like i understand that people treat it as an art form in terms of recreating things my brother came home <laughs> oh, because um, the thing is, like, there's a way of recreating um, s things like gore that people kind of say is kind of like artistic because they are creating it out of fake materials, right? Mm -hmm. Which is like, I understand what they're saying. However, I'm still not getting to the conceptual point, right? Because I feel like the only reason you can explain making something like this and wasting money and resources on recreating violence that already exists in the world at all times is, I don't know, weird fascination. And that fascination, like, concerns me. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, it's weird. No, it's totally weird. It's like, I don't know, I guess if I could compare it to comedy, it reminds mm. me of slapstick comedy. It's like what slapstick is to comedy is gore to like gore is to horror. Yeah, um, the cheap, simple way. But but it's different. But it's still different. What would you define? Really what, what would you define as slapstick? And what would you just define like, as gore? Right. I mean, like just like very simplistic, like hitting people, using I guess using violence against the body as a means mm. of getting a reaction. You know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's what the thing is, like, when I was looking up why people like this type of thing, and, like, a lot of people have actually asked online, like, I like watching this stuff, is something wrong with me? <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy. And the, the thing is, like, what I found is that a lot of people said that those people that enjoy those types of movies, especially those that are, like, specifically the gore subgenre, um, they tend to um, score lower on the empathy test really yeah. yeah oh that's freaky which well, is I mean, interesting something about because when we see i mean that does make sense because when we see someone get hurt we feel it so if you yeah. don't you know i guess that's the definition of empathy if you don't feel it then, <laughs> then... and also like a lot of people say that they get like this adrenaline rush right i don't yeah. i have never gotten an adrenaline rush yeah. from watching um gore or like seeing something disgusting like for example maggots sick. eating a body oh. never got any like yeah it just makes me feel because the thing is some people say that disgust is like one of those emotions that people are kind of seeking out to feel in like an extreme way while watching a movie or whatever but most of the time people say adrenaline most of the time that's what like the adrenaline junkie kind of like conversation is that's what people that's what people are talking about usually when they talk about horror and enjoying it so it's a little strange because I've never gotten like an adrenaline rush that's kind of like invigorating. I always felt sad and disgusted afterwards. You mean an, an adrenaline rush specifically for horror? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I like thrillers. I like when things are explored, especially like that's um, one of the things that I definitely would be able to watch is like 
when horror explores social issues for example through the lens of like horror you know and, mm -hmm. um there's oftentimes there's a lot of like movies that have done that you know like technically they're in the horror genre but they have a lot to them um mm -hmm. and it's also really interesting to study horror as like a way to look into a culture because you can see purity culture in all american horror um, everyone who dies in the beginning and, and dies a gruesome death um, is always the ones, uh, the people who have had sex in the beginning of the story, in the beginning of right. the film. It's always, if it's teenagers, if it's about teens, it's always like one of the girls who's like too promiscuous, which is weird because it's usually like her just sleeping with her boyfriend, which is like insanity. Yeah. Um, and then she gets punished for it by being yeah. murdered. And the girl who li lives at the end if, she, if, if, if the girl lives, it's going to be the virgin. Yeah. Why does that, why does that, again, I think that's a cheap, easy theme, right? And they're always used in, in like simplistic horror movies. Yeah. And also most of the time, a lot of, a lot of films in general are made by men, obviously. And yeah. a lot of horror, that's especially the in the past, have been made by men and men are men that are white, right? So there was a lot of this purity culture, a lot of mm -hmm. uh, stigmatization of women having an agency over their body. If you said yes and you enjoyed sex, you get killed after. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like, that's insanity, right? But it's just how it is. Like, it literally, you can clearly see it. It's a pattern. The black guy always dies first out of like mm -hmm. first it goes the girl it goes the girl who slept with someone and then it goes the black guy. Yeah. <laughs> there's so many there's so many horror movies with that same thing. The thing about the thing about gore and horror movies or um I guess grotesque in terms of visual gore. I mm. wonder if I wonder if it depends on what experiences you've had, I guess. And I wonder if people who have experienced what you might say is horrific in life, right? Would, you know, would tend to be drawn towards those images or the opposite and why? Yeah, because the thing is, I heard both. The person, but... Yeah, that's the thing, right? Because I, I heard both. I heard yeah. like... I can justify both sides. I prefer to shield myself from reality as much as possible in media that I consume or in art that I consume. Yes, that I would engage. Yeah. yeah, cause I would engage with, with art that's hard to consume if it, um, is made to be life affirming rather than crushing, um, or rather than just enjoying the gore of it all, you know, but I d definitely don't like watching anything that's too disturbing or too uncomfortable to watch in terms of watching people suffer or stories that are extremely sad and they just like, are sad the entire way through and stuff. And it's like, okay, I get that in life already. What the fuck would I need that? Like, especially when like, for example, I had, yeah. yeah, see? Yeah, I could, but I could also understand that seeing it would, would provide some kind of relief or i don't think relief like catharsis or whatever but like maybe catharsis maybe um the choice to be able to like to experience something similar to what you've experienced or the feeling to like be able to like expose yourself to it in a controlled way um because you can't control it in life like i think there's something to that and then and then last time we chatted about this theme just you and i there was francis bacon that artist who came up and he's a huge he's more of a modern example modern well I mean, what did he do i forget so because his name is very like can you check your mic is it is it at the same level as it was it's the same level how is it louder or, or low it's wait let me check it's a little low can you turn it up a little a little low yeah i can turn mm. it. how's this yeah okay all right um francis bacon i'm gonna send you uh he does Okay, well, one of the ones that he does is like bright orange red background with these like really ghost deformed figures. He does gore, he does like carcasses. Is that ring the bell? Is and it the guy? Is, like... is it the one that painted that guy, that Pope sitting in the chair? Yeah, that's the guy. And he's from 1909 to 1992. So he's a more recent example. But. Um, but I really think good, I actually really liked some of his movie. work before. Yeah. But I don't think I've seen all of it. Story, like, he was abused by his dad, this and that. People call him a masochist. Like, 
he was definitely in the art scene and like you know drank with all the famous painters and artists and poets at the time but like they say he was tormented turn into what they say he was tormented you know like oh tormented i mean i'm sure people have different different perspectives on him as well but he's one example where you like you really see it on the canvas and people love love his work again you're so quiet for Maybe some reason uh, did you thing? cover up the mic a little bit or something no yeah i don't mind his work either but you know i've also made a made a podcast before about super flat um art movement right and there's a lot of artists in japan that draw a lot of men who draw schoolgirls being violently like abused in different types of ways and i just don't think that it's about you exploring or you showing your tormented tor tormented nature um yeah that kind of thing i've seen as well with yeah and it, those ones freak me out because it tends to be like a young woman just i don't know in like this really gruesome visual situation yeah like this this makes a point but yeah, it's, it's not you know, there's a lot to it but it's very it's... personal you know like you can but it doesn't feel gory, even because it's not mm. really. It shows the inside, like him being tormented. But even like even paintings where there is some deformation going on, it's some. Um... Like he definitely has. I haven't seen the corpus one. No. Let me see. One sec. Let's see some. It's Sorry still. To make you look at these. It's fine. I've, I've seen so much shit in art. <laughs> Every single day. Um, I think that, you know what? I think that part of it is also context of the person, but not just their personal experience as much as their other work, too. When I see yeah, his other works, yeah. I see the, the tormented nature of the figure in all of these paintings. It doesn't make me feel like he's exploiting this animal whose carcass yeah, is around him. Okay. It feels like it's part of his experience or it's part of like who he mm. is or something like that rather than it's about the actual you animal mean. you feel yeah i see what you mean you feel him in the painting rather than taking you know taking other figures and and defiguring them at the same time there is like a picture i guess it's him oh yeah he took those photos i don't know before or after that's weird to yeah. me but I also had I this whole fight with one of my professors because she's just like so fascinated with taxidermy art and oh, yeah. I just don't vibe with it. I just don't like it. I, I don't like um, especially the way that they do it because there's like a lot of disrespect in the way that they use the bodies afterwards. Not in terms of like making a taxidermy, but the way that they position them afterwards when they buy those taxidermies and they change them into art pieces and they make them like fly with like something sticking out of their ass or whatever. It's like, come on now. Like, come on, there's a difference. Like, I understand that for some people, it's like a cultural thing to do taxidermy or whatever, but they just make them into what they used to be. They just position them in a regular way. They don't do this whole like crap of like... And it's one thing to draw it on paper. It's another to use the actual body of an animal. Exactly. And it's like, it's really weird sometimes to me when um, a lot of artists, like when they work a lot with bodies, um, with animals or non-animals, whatever, um, I find that it's weird because it, there's so much work involved in making an artwork and making these things happen. You would have to have your damn hands on that shit for days, for hours. There's no fucking way you don't, you, you're not like, yeah, like you're supposed to be enjoying it, I guess, to be doing that. And do, do, don't you have to be a fucking psychopath to do that then? Like, for example, with, um, with movies too, you know, sometimes... Uh, not just movies, but um, art too. I find it really annoying <clears throat> that some artists are uh, have this attitude of like people have to experience it in a disturbing way because um, it's a, an important issue. So you have to ex ex like um, experience it in a disturbing way. Um, yeah. Like for example, instead of just telling people about something that happened, they would want to uh, make like a immersive installation where you enter and there's like a bunch of screaming and crying and whatever and sometimes they even say that they don't want um th that was actually a fight that i had with another person in my class too when they were like i don't want any trigger warnings and stuff like that and it's right. like why not because let me tell fair. you something they're they haven't experienced fair. something as soul shattering and as depressing as having fucking cancer and if i 
were to go to a gallery just to like take my mind off of things and I walk in and no one fucking told me that I'm gonna be exposed to something like that while I'm already at the lowest point of my life. Do you not that's, understand that people experience life and they also have exactly terrible it. things happen to them? So many, that's exactly it and there's so many other things like yeah also for what benefit so that you receive their reaction mm -hmm. to highlight your art piece that's so fucking selfish yeah they want those like you know brownie points for talking about difficult issues they want to be seen as that mm -hmm. artist that sticks it up sticks it to the man you know and it's like no you aren't i know that's the part of grotesque where i think i mean i guess there are so many different kinds of grotesque because the way the movement started to me, it seemed like a response to seeing horrific things happen during the war. That was one of the things. It was like the, I don't remember which war, but it was like one of them was... Um, Probably was the first one, the first world. Oh, 1808. First World War has a movement of grotesque for sure. There's one that happens before 1808 to 1814. I have a temple. Oh, I, know. I know that one. Uh, Napoleon. Napoleon. Yeah. Napoleon yeah, War. Yeah, yeah. And they mm. call it, there's an art movement called like, like the, the you know... The response, oh, the disasters of war. Mm. Something like that. And, and anyways, it's it's one of the first, well, first recorded, or like the ones that they speak about, first recorded movements of uh, grotesque art. And that's a response to what happened during the war. It's also, it also seems to go into the critique of, critique of religion, critique of, you know, the power at the time, different things like that. So sometimes it can become comedic, right? Like, that's in still in a grotesque way like just like weird figures like um i don't know one image is demons clipping their nails which is so weird because it's like clipping nails like if you have that image already it's kind of like ooh, like you feel that that it's like these weird demons doing it to each other <laughs> <laughs> see that's so, the like, thing that's that's kind of fun actually shit. and i find that stuff interesting actually but then like the grotesque in today's world when people are just doing it for getting a reaction or like to be that like that you know that like deep thinking artist that's the thing i think that back then because it was um, i mean of course it's debatable but i feel like there mm -hmm. was less notoriety attached to being an artist especially an artist that was doing something new and not someone yeah. who was commissioned to do things right mm -hmm. um it feels like those people were actually expressing themselves and they, the horrors that they've seen and the things that have actually touched them in a, in a way that made sense to them, right? Because the thing is, yeah. like, oftentimes those people that paint those little Japanese girls, whatever, yeah. they're just fucking creeps. There's no, there's no way around it. There's no conversation to be had, that really. Be, I was watching a video, I don't know if it was, which artist it was, but it was those images, and, and like... The video was critiquing it in a very respectful way, like, as if the artist was like this really... Oh, I guess just as if the theme, because it was because it was other than the norm, was so mm -hmm. interesting and like, and, like, profound and, you know? But it's just, mm -hmm. it's just disturbing shit happening to, like, young women. Yeah, and you know, like, you ask them what it's about. And sometimes, especially when it's, it's the beginning of their career, you can see the progression of how they talk about their art in the beginning they don't have a reason for as to why they do it but the more they get um sucked into the art world and the more they get promoted because people think that since it's disturbing it means that it's good they keep on getting higher and higher in this hierarchy especially because they are usually men and they're usually men who are quite um, at a position of power in their country. So here, for example, an Asian man is not a white man, but in Asia, an Asian man is the white man, you know? Okay. So in that hierarchy, of yeah. course, they're going to be moving up this, the ladder because people just assume that there's a point to their to the violence that they're depicting in their work. And then at the end of their, not the end of the career, but the more current comments that they have or, or interviews that they've given, they have more of, um, of a response that is extremely catered to the current art society there are some words some terms that start trending in society in art um like for example two or three years ago this word was, was anthropocene you couldn't fucking go anywhere in the art world without no. hearing anthropocene anthropocene and then the damn of course grimes the leech of the word of, 
of the world. Of course, she took that word and she was like, Anthropocene, my new album, Anthropocene, you know? <laughs> He's, they're kind of like that too. They started their careers not knowing why the fuck they're doing it because they're just getting mm -hmm. off on it. And then at the end, they know how to speak about it. They are like cockroaches, you know, adapting to the situation. <laughs> there has been like a fucking, like, you could, you could nuke them and then they'll get, they'll adapt. They'll still Those still fuckers something. adapt. Yeah. They will come up with, the, with with 300 reasons as to why it's important to depict their sick and twisted mind on a canvas That's and then the profit thing. off of it. That's the thing. Yeah. They'll go, you know what? It's just, oh. I really like to to depict women getting a say this because sometimes you just need to think about why you've thought about it before. You know, or something like that. And it's like, <laughs> get fucked. Like, yeah. genuinely, just, just get out of here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> But it is frustrating because it's like in a male dominated dominated right art scene, then that those themes are gonna be explored through that lens. And yeah. And who knows, maybe if it was a woman dominated field, there'd be a lot of men being like middle and shit. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes people bring up this um, topic of like, well, there's this artist, this this woman singer who made a mi music video where she like kills a bunch of men or something, right? And right. they're like, and they try to equate it and be like, well, if she makes it, then I can make it. And it's like, no, because her work is critiquing it's the current on... power yeah, structure. Exactly. Are you dumb? Put two and two yeah. together. Like, how do you not see how this is the whole That's concept really of like comedy too. too? When people say that they can't take a joke or whatever. And it's comedy is when you're punching up, not punching down, you dumb fuck. Mm -hmm. Like when you're punching down, you're just bullying people. Yeah, well. <laughs> the grotesque is weird. I'm still looking at images. And a lot of them come from the Renaissance era, right? So it's like... <clears throat> the Renaissance? Time, I guess so, yeah. Images are also like, like these weird half bird, half fish, like different animals, right? Like I heard that it was uh, inspired by, you know, those paintings, those little drawings that were on the sides of medieval texts. It would be like mm. on the margins. And it yeah. was like inspired by that, apparently. Right. Well, I guess we should talk about, did you read the same thing? Um, the word grotesque comes from grotto, which is cave. And apparently they discovered, this is somewhere I read, the word grotesque to define art in this way came from the, dis the discovery of, I think it might have been Bakhtin. I might be wrong, but I think mm -hmm. it's this artist Bakhtin or someone else. But uh, paintings that were found kind of like hidden in a cave. And they were mm -hmm. like the disturbing, they were just like these weird, creepy, disturbing ones that were more hidden and then they were discovered and they were found in a cave so they called them grotesque. Mm. I heard that, I, I read that too, but I was like, I wonder what they found disturbing about it, right? Because sometimes I'm like, I don't know, I, I did this, um, I watched this reaction video to one of the music videos that I really like uh, by this artist Sonmi. She made a, a music video, I think I sent it to you actually. Did we talk about Sonmi before? Yeah, we did. Yeah, okay, so yeah, she had this music video where she's like, kind of like, some kind of being that's immortal and i guess she's cursed that whatever she falls in love with someone that person dies or something like yeah, that yeah i remember that one so i watched a reaction video once of this like a few men reacting to it and they were so disturbed by it they were so like offended and that was so strange to me because i was like like she wasn't even like violently murdering people or, or whatever right mm -hmm. but it's kind of like you could also read that video as like well she's an immortal being of course they're gonna die at some point right mm -hmm. and um she's kind of like, she's also dancing with their ghosts so i'm i'm assuming that they're not really that like pissed at each other so th it was probably not something that was like sin sinister i guess but it was so funny to me that they can watch things that are so disturbing like grotesque literally gross and bloody and violent and they kind of go yeah that's like it's horror but whatever right but then they watch yeah. something that's kind of actually beautifully made it's really pretty and everything and there's just this underlying current of like i guess men dying and they just like got so fucking disturbed by it <laughs> and i was just like this is a fantasy with a immortal be being who travels through time and space and you get offended by that but women get <laughs> murdered every single day and you're like not all men <laughs> Like, yeah, seriously? Yeah. Oh I just, God. like, I was just sitting there like, you can't be serious. <laughs> so whenever I type it up, the Renaissance comes up. So the origin, origins of it, 
from my understanding are just that at that time they were seeing so much horrible shit happen mm. and at some point artists and I'm sure people in general got sick of seeing these pretty paintings of you know the renaissance times like these like you know there was so much like I don't know, the birth of Venus would be one, like Mona Lisa, any religious theme in general. Like I guess a lot so, of yeah. Paintings. And then at some point, artists in the same style, right? Which is kind of cool, I think. It's, mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. it's like you're painting the same style, but you're just doing this like, it's like crazy, like crazy shit. It's like a subversion. It's just, you know, the expression of what they're actually seeing and feeling. And, and like, in my opinion, Hieronymus... Bosch's paintings are also very psychedelic. Oh yeah, he's he's credited as being like the father of um, surrealism. Like oh, surrealists yeah, kept on like bringing him up in their writing. They would constantly right. be like, Hieronymus Bosch is like the first surrealist before surrealists, basically. Right. right. Yeah. Surrealism was 19, 19 something. It was. Okay. And yeah. 1913? 1930s, I think? Mm. But the thing is, surrealism is also like one of those fucking things where it was heavily, like a lot of people know paintings of surrealism, right? But surrealism was mostly photography. It was one of those um, movements that was spearheaded by photography. And um, a lot of it is, again, misogynistic as fuck. And everyone who was in that whole thing were Freud friends, you know, Freud analysis, hysteria subscribers. I think that's actually a really good point about grotesque is that a lot of the themes that are going to be deeply explore, explored in grotesque are going to be misogynist ones just because that's like, because I don't know, there's so many men and they have all the time in the world to think about these things and put them down. And the thing is, they down. weirdly like, do. Like, why do they do, why do they think about that so much? It's fucked. Yeah. It's genuinely fucked. And like, you know, yeah. and they have that's the stage to, to, think about it and explore it and conceptualize it like yeah the and thing. then blame it on women afterwards being like they're hysterical and then the thing is like that's why i like exploration of like feminine no, horror like when it's like hysterical. very pretty images <laughs> but have like an underlying current of something because i find that it is very indicative of like a, a young teenagerhood or um like Pre- pre-teen experience of being a girl is like yeah. all of this like you you're surrounded you're specifically in, in traditional sense you're surrounded by things that are freely pink and and soft and everyone constantly tells you how you're supposed to be and whatever whatever while yeah. at the same time you're also told you get you get bloody periods that are extremely painful at the age of like eight oh my God. to eleven and then like talk about the experience of birth it's like if we're gonna and talk they about... tell you about these things and then they tell you that you need to be happy about it and they basically tell you yeah. you're gonna suffer and you're gonna suffer for yeah. this thing that other people i.e men get for free without any suffering and you have to be fine with it it's an infuriating experience being a, a little girl yeah. it's infuriating and that's funny because we haven't even talked about any really female focused themes and grotesque but talk There's... about it. it's like it's like yeah okay it's understandable that war was a big theme in grotesque because like because like you know like no shit violence, obviously like no shit yeah. but um but yeah like talk about a, a woman's experience there's a lot of grotesque in it that we could represent people get so offended and disgusted when it is yeah grotesque. but it's also weird because it's like mm, there's this weird juxtaposition or explored like we haven't explored so many of these things birth and our periods and everything we yeah birth like, is the ultimate uh body horror there's still so much and even just medical like female female health in general yeah there's so much i don't know there's so much medical misogyny it's just actually. like blatant as yeah. hell yeah and like, and the thing is like a lot of people so no we're not gonna have we're not gonna have that exploration within art because that's a privilege we're still at the basic because the thing is you know with um with this type of stuff i feel like there are definitely more films that explore that stuff a lot of more art that explores that stuff um however again the movie carrie does that's an example yeah um that's an example but then again it's like it's like half of it is like that exploration but at the same time they kind of glorify the whole mentality of like a school shooter basically oh wow Right? Because, like, she kills everybody at the end. Yeah, that's true. 
which she kills people who didn't do shit technically too yeah. she kills those that were nice to her as well oh my god that movie scared me so much i never watched it again <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah it's just i think it's pretty tame yeah. they they it is just movie. the whole religious theme and the mother and the fuck it's honestly i know I know, I know. <laughs> fucking, fucking religious themes and mothers. Yeah. No. Um, the thing is, there's no reason to make body horror. Just go and watch birthing videos, <laughs> C-sections, where they remove all of your organs oh to get God. to the womb, and then put the organs back. Like that's fucked. That's not and normal. <laughs> again, like some people. Okay, coming back to your thing about empathy. Mm? This is this is like. This is one thing I heard one time, too. They said that, and this is, uh, I don't know, whatever. But uh, I heard one time that people are drawn to the scientific field that's, like, more biology or no, not, like, things where you're closer to the body. They also have less empathy. I'm not saying they're bad people, but, mm -hmm, but like, mm -hmm. there have been studies said to, you know, done to say that they've had less empathy. And and that's just to say if you can if you can disconnect from, like, mutilating a body... If it's for, you know, medical benefit, if it's a surgery, nah, nah, nah. but like maybe mm -hmm. there's something about that where, where some people can detach and then some of us just feel it in our own body and we can't handle it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I was talking about that with one of my friends. Like he is a male friend, but we were like talking about how like he's he when he talks to people who to his friends about their issues, like he's like, yeah, that sucks, but I don't feel it. And he's like, but when you're, he's like, whenever I like watch you talk to people, I can feel you squirming when something bad happens to them. Like you, you feel, and I'm like, yeah, no shit, I feel it. Like, what do you mean you don't? You know, like, it's fucking weird. <laughs> like, it's funny because like a lot of people try to like explain it by being like, well, just, you know, I'm just a guy. And I'm like, I, I don't care. What? I don't care. Is like, it that? I don't think it's that. <laughs> it isn't. It isn't. It's just an excuse. It's yeah. an excuse to not address it. Yeah. And, like, not think about it much, you know? Mm. And, like, it's weird because it's not dissociation. Because dissociation is different. Because you... Dissociation That's comes from, from experiencing That's too much and thinking. having to remove yourself mentally yeah. from the experience. Yeah. Here, they know exactly what's going on and they don't need any removal from the situation yeah. because they're fine with it. Yeah. Which is good for, for us in some ways because we do need people who are going to be surgeons. We can't just all fucking pass out from looking at a beating heart or some shit like that you know yeah. uh, but at the same exactly. time no exactly that's the thing so mm -hmm. some people can do it some people uh, can watch a gory horror movie and eat like spaghetti with like red sauce pasta and like ground beef and yeah and they're fine so yeah people, you know but you know have different sensitivities i think what i find strange is um the norm like I understand that it's part of a life cycle, right? But the normalization of like the pain that comes with birth and like yeah. not trying to make strides in making it less painful and less invasive and less yeah. whatever, whatever. There's no, yeah. like since I was born, there has been much of improvement in terms of um, pap tests, for example. Yeah. Like there's no improvement. Yes, they tested better or whatever, but there's no improvement in, for example, giving a little bit of anesthetic or something. They just decided that there's no nerves, which is just true just for a portion of population. But they decided that and they don't give a flying fuck that some people pass out from pain. And actually in the reverse, What's interesting is that the methods of birth that are more revered or respected are the ones that the natural birth, which is yeah, the most which is the stupidest fucking painful. thing ever. Like, because it's like, know. what for? That's yeah. For what reason exactly? Are you are you dying from cancer without any pain medication? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Do yeah. you not take Tylenol when you have a fever? And I mean, it just comes back. It just comes back to women need to suffer in that. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, well, why? Why is it that okay. if we're so yeah. fragile, if we cannot take positions of power, why is it it's in so the same? How does it coexist? Right? Explain it yeah. to me. That's what's that, that's what's so scary is that like they look at something as disturbing as this. Guys get so squirmy when I tell them like, just imagine giving birth through your asshole, like a whole <laughs> a whole watermelon coming through your anus just imagine it are you fine with it with that idea and they they don't they can't even let me finish the sentence they start screaming and and like Lisa, why would you even say that yeah 
You're right. Why would I even say that? Because you keep on telling me how many children you want with a hypothetical wife that you don't have who did not tell you how many children she wants. Get fucked. To be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can go get fucked. Yeah. <laughs> God. I'm such an angry Shit. little bitch, but that means that I am okay. feeling better and that my energy is coming back after Aww. cancer. It's because I am what? Angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We should talk about surrealism another time. Oh yes. Surrealism. There's some really good there's some really, really good female South American artists. That's the love thing. It. I love to talk about female it. artists on this podcast because they always get overlooked mm -hmm. and some of them were yeah. first. Some of them did it first. It's funny in our theme of grotesque that it came to that, that it kind of came to that conclusion. Like, I don't know. I don't think there's much female grotesque to talk about. No, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot. There's a lot of female grotesque to talk about, but it's not <clears throat> conceptually exploring the reasons for it and stuff like that. It is just yeah. for men's gratification because they enjoy the watching thing. violence against women. There's no the actual point, but there's tons of it, especially in porn. Yeah. Oh my god, there's way too much of it. Our world has. A Hey, that's the thing there's so many themes in our world that have ex been explored in way too much and yeah. a lot of it's just like male psyche <laughs> <laughs> fuck but also like it's always in the way of like oh, oh he has the right to feel this way because it must be our nature that we think about these things about that's others exactly that it. we feel so this exactly way it. it's like why do you have to spend so much time exploring these twisted elements of the psyche like yeah why are you focusing on it and then going you know what i have to defend it I have mm -hmm. the right to feel this way, and I have the right to not only feel this way, but spend tons of um, resources, money, and force, like, how, how Kubrick would be an asshole to his um, actresses to get, like, the authentic reaction or whatever. And it's like, nobody gives a flying fuck, Kubrick. You can go and fuck yourself. Because, yeah. no, like, there's no reason to be torturing somebody in real life for your art in quotations. Yeah, <laughs> and I would get in so many fights at school about that because every artist, mm -hmm. not every artist, but like 75 to 85 percent of artists I know are assholes who think that their art is worth other people's That's suffering so in the bothersome. process. That's so bothersome because if you've experienced any pain yourself that was like, you know, too hard to handle, you would you would have had so much more empathy and realizing what right? goes into the world and right the world. that's what i think too yeah. but they would always give me this like lisa that's like i'm i've also a tortured person tortured artist then why are you roping in people into your yeah. art to do things that are not good for them like i had this guy in my class who would literally pay sex workers to um like come in to be like in his photo shoots and of course the whole like point is that she's a sex worker you know, otherwise he would have hired a fucking model, yeah. right? And then there was like this weird thing where he would want certain things from them because he would want an artistic picture or whatever. And I was just like, F take pictures of yourself. Yeah. Take. Pi That's why I oftentimes it's not it's not yeah. narcissism. It's just I don't want to rope people into my art. I will do the thing that I am going to do for my art, and I don't want anybody else, even if they consent, I don't want them to be like a puppet in my own art course, like it feels right? weird of course yeah that's such a lot and they would get offended stuff. by me and it's like you what? can't you cannot fucking be offended by that you're doing <laughs> something really offensive to some to someone's entire existence because you you're saying that their well-being is less important than your stupid ass art that's not even good yeah exactly even if it was good i would still argue with you <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> I find it interesting when it is a response to, because there's also the fact that it's a response to the norms of beauty. And mm. that's also, right? Like, that's also fair, because it's true within art, like, it's always going to be, that's that's always been a discussion, what's beautiful, what's not. So I understand when, when people are like, well, I'm going to paint this weird fucking shit and just like, because I don't want to paint the same, you know, the same beautiful figure as everybody else. That's actually a good point, you know? Because um, sometimes people are kind of also like play, you know, the thing is, again, it could be a bad artist doing it and an artist who actually believes in what they're saying. But sometimes people would take pictures of others who have suffered some kind of uh, deformation and they're like going through something or whatever. Right. And then they would yeah. um, put it on like 
under a spotlight, but it's like、mm. very ambiguous whether they're trying to do something good or something bad. Because because sometimes they say that they're like, I want to show the beauty of whatever, whatever, whatever. But in reality, they're again, they just want brownie points. Right. <laughs> There's still some kind of exploitation involved in that.、Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like it still、yeah. doesn't feel. I know your you intention. Yeah, I know what you mean. There's also the fact that within the grotesque. It ends up just being the most absurd images, and I guess it goes to show how uncomfortable. Like we are comfortable with order and things that make sense, and things、mm-hmm. that don't make sense can be disturbing to us. So it's that realm of just like complete mayhem. Okay, I'm, really- I'm looking at this one image. I have to send to you because <laughs> as I'm saying this, this is what I'm looking at. Oh yeah, I've seen that one. Is it Bosch again? This one. That might not be him, but it looks like his work. The funniest shit is this. Wait, let me take a screenshot so I can zoom in. This guy's face. I know. Is his hair getting pulled? Yeah, his hair is getting pulled. He looks happy. He has like this long white beard. <laughs> but also, he looks like a baby who's also an old man. I know. At、And、the same time. Smile. Go for it. And it's funny because the technique is so like the colors, the technique, old school. Like there's such. It's very old school. There's such detail and everything, and like, can you imagine spending that time painting this green little goblin on the bottom left with those like? Skin, Honestly, like I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I wouldn't spend that much time drawing Jesus, but a weird little goblin. <laughs> you might. You might have a point there. <laughs> I'm、yeah. looking at these paintings, and honestly, they are. So interesting to look at, like the movie that you said. It's like, because every corner you see something different. Yeah, that's the thing. That I was, I was literally talking、it's、about、so、how fucking strange. Like you would never expect, you know. Yeah. These things. They're so、um, tiny that you have、yeah. to like really look into them. And there's like there's some pictures online of like Bosch's work, for example, that's really really high definition that you can zoom in. So close that you can see、it's、the cracks、so、on the paint. It's so crazy. That's why and... for me, Haram Haramus Bosch. Like I've heard that critique where, like, he's he's actually being critical of sin and like gluttony and all these things. And I just like okay, even if he is, he fucking loved painting all these nude people like eating <laughs> strawberries and like whatever like. You know what I mean, like. Yeah. And he was probably really, fucking getting off on like on、fun. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also like、you、he was probably really, getting like, off on painting them,、sins. getting getting like fucked over by uh the the darkness of the the prince of darkness in the last part of the painting. Like he painted such weird shit, like musical notes on someone's ass tattooed on it. Yeah, yeah. Someone someone、that. transcribed it. I actually played it in the in the podcast too.、Yeah. It's like a really weird notes. Weird notes, and it's like has kind of like some. It's basically involving some notes that are considered to be like the devil notes or whatever, because they sound so unpleasant the to the ear.、Okay. Yeah, there's some there's some chords and some notes that were kind of like prohibited to be played together at the time, because they were considered to be un, like unpleasant to the ear. So therefore, they're like devil related.、Mm. Sure. We actually need to talk about some、um, classical music pieces because I, I went, I took a classical music course, like classical music theory, and they explained like really cool shit. Like there's like some、uh, classical pieces that show musically show a story, and there's like a p- part in the story, for example, where someone's head cut is cut off and it like bounces down the stairs or whatever. Whoa! During the revolution, there's like a language that they speak within、yeah. that. Like、yeah. like the way that they write、oh, things, like for example, descending half tone notes or whatever are considered to be tears. Oh. In in classical classical、uh, music. Wow. Yeah. Did you mention owls? <laughs> Because there's、yeah. so many owls in paintings. <laughs> yes, you. <laughs> That's so crazy. There's one. There's and there's a the prince. The darkness. The the prince of darkness is an owl. Oh. The one that's one shitting out people. Like, Look at the. Black eyes and this one guy's just hugging it like, like with this weird. Oh my、face. god! <laughs> look at look at Bosch. Do you have Bosch's、uh, painting like the garden open? That's、no. what I'm looking at. Okay, so look at the one that's like at all the way on the right, sitting、yeah. on that chair and it's shitting out people. It's eating、wait. a person and it's shitting、wait. them out. Okay, wait, no, I don't see that one. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's all the way on the right. It's the right panel. Oh my god, the, there are like legs and arms coming out with like... Yeah, because like he's, he's eating people and then shitting them out. That's crazy. And also there's a lot of, um, you know, it, oh, I just remember why I thought that he was also not like a person who was critiquing the church or whatever, is because there's a lot of um, signs of like crescent moons, which is mm -hmm. reference to um, Muslim religions or Islam, I guess, in the really? right panel where it's the devil. So he's kind really? of saying that all the all, all Islam people are going to hell. Really? Yeah. Holy oh, shit, wow. That's why I was like, no, he was probably a conservative little bitch. There's yeah, no fucking definitely. way he would paint that if he was, um, you know, criticizing the church. It's it's at the top right, in the, in the right, far right panel at the top. There's like, you can wow. see like small little flags with like crescent moons. Creepy. There's like at least yeah, three of the them. Shapes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. yeah, yeah. There's the weirdest shit in this. Oh. And there's also like a, a river with boats and stuff like that because it's a it's it's like people crossing across the river down in hell or whatever, like, being delivered all, to to hell. They're all riding like their boats are fruits. Yeah, and there's also in the middle panel, there's people where there's like men and men being like together, I guess, um, yeah. referencing homosexuality, I guess. So they're kind of shown, see again, as like being punished for it in the next panel. Right. There's one guy who's bending over and his flowers coming out of his ass. Yes. Yeah, that's another <laughs> and then one. There's another guy putting the flowers in his ass. That's exactly, funny. exactly. That, that's also um, like a punishment right. for sodomy or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's a punishment, to be honest, at this point, in this context. <laughs> but whatever. It's a party, I guess. I don't know. Oh, and there's also someone signing um, a contract in the right bottom panel, which is basically referencing, like, signing your soul to the devil. Yeah, the like, signing contract might be in a different painting, because I remember hearing about that one, too. No, it's it's definitely in the Garden of, of Earthly Delights. Hey, it's a right theme? panel at the very bottom. Oh, it's like a, a pig. A pig is asking him to like to sign the. <laughs> a pig is asking him to sign the contract. Of course, of course. A bunch of people okay. in in uh per in, not in pearls but in clams having sex with like pearls falling out of there. Oh, you know what? Okay, I was only looking at the center. Oh my god, okay, it makes so much more sense. I was only looking at the center panel, which is the biggest panel by the way, and it's like, oh, the fun so you haven't seen the, then, the, the Prince of Darkness shitting them out? No, because I was like, yeah, I see an owl dancing on like arms and legs, but like, he's not eating. He's girl, not, like, girl, no, it's on the, it's on the right panel. <laughs> Look at you it, really it's disturbing see? as shit. But yeah, suddenly I'm like, oh, you really see from left to right how it goes from Garden of Eden to like, mm -hmm. just this crazy shit. To hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they say his self support to this though too. I guess there's the theme of eggs. Eggs, yeah, cracked eggs and birds. A pika oh. in a plate. <laughs> <gasps> yoni baby, you're so yoni. Oh, oh excuse me. She threw her <gasps> treat. Okay, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. She we froze? need to go for a walk. I get it. Anyway, yeah, we should talk about surrealism next time. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you and Hope go on a walk then. That was okay. really nice. Yeah, okay, let's actually do it again, because that was fun. Yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. <laughs> thank you for listening to us.